Hi, it's nice to see you again. I'm Yilin from CEDA. In this video, I would like to introduce the specific use cases of AI digital twin in healthcare. And it can help you understand the usage and the implementation of AI digital twin through real use cases. Have you ever imagined what the future of healthcare could like? What if I told you that doctors could visualize your health indicators in real time and even simulate the impact of your surroundings on your health? Picture this. You are in the hospital and the doctor just pick up the display next to you. They can see the visualization of your body from your cells to your organs and then they can monitor and simulate any virus or potential issues. With AI digital twin, doctors can make timely and rapid judgment to provide the best treatment. All this sounds amazing, but in fact, these are not far from us. So today I will introduce how AIDT can help us in real life medical development. And I want to start by sharing a few outstanding examples of AIDT in the healthcare. First up is the Diabetes model proposed by Eddie and the Schlesigen Bank in 2003. They use different equations to build a AID to twin model that replicated the diabetes at a high level of biological and uh, clinical detail. This model can be applied to a wide range of clinical and management problems and can even be validated. It currently includes diabetes and uh, its complications, enabling it to address comorbidities and uh, treatments with multiple outcomes. Imagine being able to simulate testing and treatment of diabetes in different patients. This is the kind of innovations that AIDT make possible. Another fantastic example is the artificial pancreas created by Korachev and the team in 2019. The model simulates the action of the human metabolic system and uses readily available real-time signals, like continuous glucose monitoring to automate illusion delivery. With control algorithm that optimize blood glucose condition in patient's natural environment. The transition of the artificial pancreas to everyday clinical use is occurring. Similarly, working with device that patients use in the digital therapeutic ecosystem. And uh, the last but not least, let's talk about the cardiac digital twin created by Gutierrez and Shang and their respective teams in 2019. They built a digital twin model of heart and uh, detect and predict causes of the thrombiosis and uh, simulate the flow of the blood through the heart. Just imagine having a digital twin that allows doctors to visualize your heart conditions and make accurate prediction about your health. So we have seen some critical examples of AIDT in action, but due to the complex of the human body, this example tend to focus on just one aspect of our health. That is where Barbara and the team comes in. They create a digital twin for patients by modeling the whole human body and providing a panoramic view they can offer personalized, systematic, and uh, precise treatment plan. What is real cool is they combine graph representation with DT to overcome the limitations of the traditional digital, digital twin. They are able to scale various body signals at different levels, providing a more accurate and uh, detailed view of the patient's health. This work is first proof of concept for a new class of machine learning assistance tools that can be extended to healthcare device deployment and uh, runtime monitoring and uh, verification. By merging ideas from systems medicine with scientific computing and machine learning, Babio and the team are taking IDT to the next level. Like these images, the AIDT patient model that mimics the human body with four layers. 
uh, transcriptomics and uh, cells, organs, and uh, exposure layers. Using all this data, NDT can predict how our body might react to different disaster or treatment. And it's not just a static model, it can actually change and evolve over time to reflect how our body changes. The way it looks is by using something called graphic neural networks, the GNN, which is the fancy way of saying it can predict important things like blood pressure, and it's not just the GNN IDT, and use generative adversarial networks, the GANs, to combine different types of data, like genes and uh, proteins, to get a more complete picture of what's going on. But what is really exciting about IDT is how it can help us to test our new medical interventions. With the IDT, we can see how different treatments might affect us. Let's have a brief introduction to what a graph neural network is. A graph is a data structure made up of a node and the edges that used to represent complex systems like social networks or like a biological networks. Well, a graph neural network is a type of neural network that's designed to work with the kind of data. GNN are like a tool that can learn how to understand and manipulate these networks. They can look at each node and the uh, edge in the graph and assign it to the feature vector, which is a way to represent the node or edge as a number or vectors. GNN is flexible and uh, customizable. They can work with different types of graph structure and handle different kinds of data, like global attributes that apply the entire graph, node attributes that apply to individual nodes, or edge attributes that describe the relationship between nodes. In other words, GNN are powerful tools to understanding and analyze complex systems that are represented as a graphs. So why do they need graph network for this project? Well, there are actually several reasons to make them the perfect tool for the job. Firstly, GNN and uh, GNN are great detecting non-linear patterns in data. And let's face it, most systems are non-linear, so it's pretty important. Secondly, like the graph basic model is easier to interpret than other types of neural network. That means we can understand why the model is making certain predictions which is crucial in fields like clinical practice. And another reason we are using graph is because they are unique type of non-Euclidean data structure. That might sound complicated, but it just means that they are great for molding complex biologic systems at different scales, like the tissues and organs in the body. Modularity is another key property of graph network that we are talking advantage of. It means we can learn independent mechanisms that can be reused in different parts of the graph, making it easier to scale and model the dynamic properties of the system. Finally, both GNN and GNN are really good at combining different types of data source, like structured and unstructured data, which is important when we are integrating signals at different biologic scale levels. So there you have it. Graph network are the perfect tools for the healthcare project, and we got plenty of reason to back this up. GNN allowed us to bring down the complex of the human body into separate subsystems, each represented by a different node or network of nodes in the digital patient's model. So in this paper, as I mentioned before, there's four biologic layers. Let's break it down. And the first is the transcriptomics layer is all about the RNA transcript produced by the genome and at the specific time. We can measure the entire genome and use the resulting gene expression data to review disease mechanisms. Moving on to the cellular layer, we are dealing with biologic processes that affect individual cells. Thinking, metabolism, replication, and um, multi 
It is fascinating how all these processes work together to keep our bodies running smoothly. The open layer is where things get even more complex. We are dealing with the network of tissues and the collaborating organs that all have similar functions. It is incredible how everything works together to keep our body function properly. And last but not least, we have the exposure group layer. The layer represents the total amount of exposure experience. We are talking like a toxic substance treatment, physical activities, posture, and uh, even the lifestyle habit. All the factors influence the individual health or disease status and are independent with human genetics, health status, and uh, physiology. And they also show two case studies in the papers. In the first case, use digital patients model over time to simulate appropriate treatment plan to treat patients with hypertension. And uh, in the second case, continuous real-time monitoring and accurate prediction use ATT to prevent life-threatening complications of influenza. And uh, let's take a look at this figure. It shows the clinical state of the heart in two-dimensional projected phase space to for two different case studies. In both cases, a GNN-based model was used to simulate the effect of treatment on blood pressure. The first graph on the left shows the effect of different treatments for high blood pressure. The grid density shows the predicted outcome of the treatment plan that included increased physical activity and uh, reduced calorie intake. Compared to medication, this treatment plan results in a overall reduction in blood pressure and heart trouble variability, which lowers the risk of developing serious cardiovascular disease. The second graph shows the simulation for case where the patients have vital infection that affects the heart. The red density shows the long-term effect of the unthreat infection on body pressure, which the Orange density shows the effect of the current treatment. The green density shows the predicted blood pressure trajectory in the heart chambers in real time if the patient is in healthy state condition. While ARGT shows great promise in healthcare, there are also some obstructions we need to overcome. One of the biggest challenges is the data security and the privacy. Digital twin need access to vast amount of patient data be, to be effective. But we also need to ensure that patient data is protected, that only accessed by authorized personnel. And another consideration is the ethics. We need to make sure that our IDT are fair and unbiased and don't discriminate against the certain patients. It is especially important because AI system can sometimes cause bias to exist that in the data they are trained on. Despite these challenges, the potential of AI DT in healthcare is huge. Technology is changing the way we think about healthcare, and AI DT is at the forefront of this revolution. By integrating data and using machine learning to predict outcomes, we can provide doctors with better decision support system and reduce the cost of evaluating optimized therapies and reduce errors. This technology is even extending to medical device deployment and runtime monitoring and validation. It brings together ideas from systems medicine, scientific computing and machine learning to give us more holistic views of humanity and improve the quality of healthcare. The future of healthcare is already here and it's exciting to see what comes next. And uh, that is all for the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe our channel to stay up to date our latest content. If you are interested in learning more about AIDT or other AI-related topics, if you want to collaborate with us to discuss AIDT further, please join our CEDA community. Hoping to see you there.